Welcome back. Uh, it's now time for our weekly feature, The Politics Wrap with uh, Natasha Perry. Thank you so much, Mbali. There's a lot to reflect upon this week, uh, specifically about the state's sustainability of the GNU and, of course, the recent by-elections. But to the story now, the Democratic Alliance says it will continue with its legal action to challenge the Basic Education Laws Amendment Act, irrespective of the three months of the engagement announced by President Sil Ramaphosa. While signing the bill into law, Ramaphosa said an opportunity would be given to those who have concerns regarding clauses 4 and 5 of the Bella Law to engage with government and come up with acceptable alternatives. The clauses relate to the rights and responsibilities of school governing bodies, including language policy and admissions. All other clauses of the legislation come into effect immediately. As a show of protest to the signing of the bill, Minister of Basic Education, Sivio Huarube, did not attend the signing ceremony at the union buildings. In a letter addressed to the President on Friday morning, Huarube reiterated the sentiments of a party, the DA, that is opposed to the bill in its current form. The DA has requested the President to refer back to Parliament for reconsideration in terms of Section 79 of the Constitution. It also says the three-month period for talks on clauses 4 and 5 of the bill announced by Ramaphosa will not derail the party's planned legal action. The fact that President Ramaphosa said that should we not be able to get consensus after this three-month period, the bill will be implemented is not in good faith and it does not reflect what he said in the statement of intent that was signed between all the parties of the GNU when it was formed. That statement makes provision for sufficient consensus that must be reached between all parties. If the president is going to sign this unilaterally again after three months, it will mean that he has got a disregard for this sufficient consensus that they have agreed to. The president said in the spirit of openness and cooperation, he has decided to give those concerned about the two clauses an opportunity to engage on alternatives. The clauses relate to the rights and responsibilities of school governing bodies, including language policy and admissions. So I've decided to delay the implementation for clauses four and five of the bill by a period of three months. The rest of the act is implemented immediately. For three months, I allow four and five to ha have those engagements. This will give the parties time to deliberate on these issues and make proposals on how the different views may be accommodated. Should the parties not be able to agree, I want to make this clear, should the parties not be able to agree on an approach, then we will proceed with the full implementation of all the parts of the bill. Gauteng Premier Payanza Lisufi says with the three months grace period for concerned parties to engage on the two clauses, little will change. The former Gauteng Education MEC welcomed the signing of the Bella Bill, congratulating Ramaphosa for making the legislation, which was a long time in the making, a reality. But remember, there's nothing new. There's nothing new that will be presented on the table because this bill was adopted by eight of nine provincial legislatures. This bill went through public participation. This bill went through parliament. This bill allowed members of parliament to vote and they voted and we know the outcome so but if there are some people that still feel that uh, they want to express a view we want to thank the president for giving them that window of opportunity but the bill is signed the bill is a law as i'm speaking to you now it's no longer a bill it's an act of parliament that must be adhered to an education expert has unpacked the implications of the president's decision believe that there's any need for amendments in terms of language because the language provisions in Bella are the same as the language provisions in earlier legislation. The only thing that Bella does is based on many court rulings which provide more guidance on how decisions about language policy are made. Bella implements a detailed set of processes that the provincial department must follow.
in engaging school governing bodies. Both school governing bodies and the provincial department have a responsibility to take forward the intent of the constitution. But the way that they engage is now so detailed. Now, that protects school governing bodies in terms of fair administrative procedure. In a statement, lobby groups AfriForum, Solidarity and SOS said they look forward to the opportunity to participate in engagements around the clauses. Natasha Piri, SABC News, Pretoria. Now, Dr. Tsepang Molale of the Wits University joins us for more. Dr. Molale, thank you so much for joining us on SABC News. Uh, now, I guess um, the sustainability of the GNU has also come under the spotlight uh, this week. Today, I attended uh, the signing of the Bella Law into an Act, and we didn't see the DA, uh, or the DA minister, I beg your pardon, the Minister of Basic Education, uh, Sivio Harube, um, attend um, that signing ceremony. In a statement, she says it's a form of protest. Um, do you think that the center is holding in the GNU? Well, um, considering the fact that uh, these are different political parties with totally opposed uh, ideological perspectives and policies, um, it is expected that uh, such tensions will happen. So it's not a matter of whether or not the center is holding, but um, a matter of how is it that they are in spite of these uh, tensions that are coming, what is it that they can do to, you know, reach out to one another and sort of, you know, come together, remembering the pledge they made when they entered into this coalition. So it will be expected from time to time um, that these tensions will be, you know, uh, experienced uh, on a, a number of uh, a, a, a portfolios. So it's just that now um, this one is a major one uh, a, a, and the, the first of its kind, um, looking at the fact that the, uh, the DA has always been opposed to this legislation from the beginning, even before they entered into this GNU. So earlier on, I was just listening to the roundtable discussions that the president was having uh, with various um, um, editors um, across the country. And, you know, some interesting questions actually came about, um, so to speak, about the tenure of um, the president. Do you think that the GNU is likely to stay beyond President Sil Ramaphosa's tenure? Because remember, he vacates office in 2027. And this also coincides with him, um, well, cutting ties, not cutting ties per se, but his tenure in the ANC also ends as president. Do you see it surviving? Do you see the GNU surviving beyond this term? Well, the only indicators for the survival of this GNU would be um, uh, answers to, or, or affirmative answers to questions such as, are uh, as uh, coalition partners, are we getting, you know, what we wanted in the beginning? So if it so happens that we'll continue to have um, tensions like this and they, you know, they, 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 they become greater and they, you know, uh, spill over to a number of different sectors or portfolios in the cabinet, it, it, is, it is more likely that at any at any time, uh, the parties that that, that that would be feeling like you know they are not uh, they are, they are, they are, they are being compromised, they are being taken for a ride. They might decide to you know pull out. So we, we cannot necessarily say that um, this is it. We cannot call it to say even now we are looking towards you know the, the beginning of the end. Um, it might it, it might as well be that uh, be behind closed doors when they meet in uh, forums like just uh, such as cabinet le uh, It might as well be that they will put their policy. Uh, proposals on the table and compromises then uh, between the leaders of these different political parties will have to be made uh, if their interest collectively is to ensure that you know the, 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 the GNU continues and it even goes beyond the tenure of the president um, in the ANC. But um, um, we cannot necessarily say that it would outlast him uh, when he vacate office because um, for as long as the political parties are happy in this current administration, it might as well go until we go towards the next elections but if we find those key players one notably being the da not finding you know satisfaction with the when the manner in which decisions are made mm -hmm. um it might as well be that they would you know call it quits and therefore maybe move outside and try to or put pressure on the nc or threaten them uh, uh, if you will to say if you continue in this way we're going to maybe influence others and then pull out from this gnu and you would not have a government uh, to uh, fully govern with and you have all these political parties in, you know, the GNU. How big do you think is the temptation uh, by these political parties or signatories in the GNU uh, to want to actually implement their own policies? 
Well, the, the, the temptation is very big. I would like to make an example with a home affairs portfolio, for example. Um, even uh, with, within a few days, we've seen uh, the minister uh, uh, in, in, in home affairs making some policy statements, um, talking about some you know, innovations that he's coming up with. Um, I'd like to, to, to think that mostly uh, these are you know, in, uh, uh, ideas or policy positions that you know, came from his political party. Maybe a proposal was made made in cabinet to say this is how we'd like to structure or, or to, to run this portfolio. So from time to time when you look at you know these different uh, players in these different cabinet uh, positions um, and the kind of uh, development across the board, you will see that in most instances, you know, these political parties are trying to demonstrate, you know, their capacity, their strength to, you know, render services. So mm -hmm. it is always the case that you would find that they would want to push, you know, their policy uh, priorities because, uh, you know, they are not accountable to uh, another political party, in this case, the ANC, they are accountable to their own constituencies. So I see that the temptation is very high, but, you know, what matters should be not necessarily that when we were in power, this is what we did. But the, 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 the argument should be us together as a collective. These are the different innovations. These are the different policy uh, priorities that we, you know, uh, uh, agreed through consensus that as government we are going to implement, not as a political party. You talk about service delivery earlier there. Um, do you think, and I, I think the greater, in the greater scheme of things, who is more important here, uh, South Africans at large? Are they getting service delivery or not? Do you think there's a better chance of South Africans in various communities across the country of getting service delivery in this government of national unity? Um, ideally, I would say yes, and the same yes because of this point that I just mentioned that it is not like when you know uh, service delivery uh, uh, implementation plans are you, you know being made not necessarily because one is loyal to a particular political party. Um, if if these political parties are you know accountable to their own constituencies, it it, it might as well be that they might try to ensure that the smooth delivery um, or effective delivery in their portfolios to service those constituencies. However, um, 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 such tensions such as what we're experiencing now in the education portfolio might as well be that they may to a certain extent you know lead to to hamper service delivery mm -hmm. in a sense that you'd find them, you know, a, a, a politics now clouding administration. And when now they are fighting, those who are tasked with implementing such uh, policies, they would now be struggling because there will be a tug of war between these political principles. So on the one hand, in as much as it might, uh, uh, it, might, it might as well be that because they are not accountable to one party, they are you know, accountable more to their constituencies, it might work, service delivery might be smoother or effective. However, on the other end, politics and political fighting across different political parties might um, to a certain extent affect uh, that delivery and now ensuring that those who are the most important, which is the citizens would not be getting what is it that they should be getting. So it's all about ensuring that at the end of the day, um, they do not let this political infight, uh, mm. uh, political uh, fracas and fightings to uh, spill over into administration. And talking about that fracas and the political infighting, if, and you mentioned it before, you touched on it, if GNU partners uh, disagree on matters pertaining to policies, are we likely to see more of these disagreements, uh, you know, um, um, or more of these disagreements of this nature? Well, um, like, like any, any marriage, uh, I do not see a, a, a GNU or a coalition government uh, being smooth throughout. Um, let me make the example of uh, in one local government um, uh, when Zandile Masina was the mayor of Ekurilene, he was able to run, you know, through different uh, uh, other other players, um, a coalition government until he finished his tenure uh, towards the, late, uh, the, the, the the recent local government elections. And I've got to say that even in that tenure, when he was trying to find compromises, what happened? Uh, uh, there were instances of motions of no confidence being. You you know, um, um, uh, tabled against him, although he survived them. However, it is not like um, uh, uh, tensions are sort of, you know, uh, 
creating an environment that you know uh, uh, that, 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 that there will not be uh, success in the coalition. They will have uh, tensions, particularly because they've got opposing uh, political ideologies or perspectives or policy positions for that matter. However, the important thing is, in as much as or in the event they're experiencing these tensions, what I would expect is they need to now reach out to one another. Mm. We, we we had just uh, in this package you played before this interview, um, or the, the president is saying um, he's giving he, uh, his coalition partners about three months to mm. see if they do not come together. One would say perhaps he's trying to force their hand um, to come to the negotiation table. But however, there are some within the DA who are feeling like uh, this is not in good faith. You are not doing this looking at you know us finding agreements, mm. but you are scoring political points. So these such tensions are expected and they will continue to happen. But the important thing is for all of them, they need to make sure that what they are prioritizing is not to, to let politics to cloud administration and ensure that the citizens you know are serviced there is better and effective delivery of services to them not to concentrate on their differences and the tensions um, I just want us to also focus on another um, issue um, of by-elections. We saw that the super by-elections on, on Wednesday. Um, what do you make of, of the figures that we saw there? We saw the DA retained 16 wards, the ANC retained one, but actually lost one uh, to the MK in KwaZulu-Natal, the Ray Nkonyani um, municipality. We also saw Al Jamaa security, um, securing one ward in uh, Johannesburg. Are they indicating anything in the government of national unity? Well, um, what, what I see with uh, these by-elections is basically realignment of politics. Mm -hmm. um, after the 2021 uh, local government elections, what we experienced was um, um, there were you know, those who had said we'll never be working with this uh, party X. We're going to make sure that we you know, stay away from uh, having coalition with party Y. But um, after the GNU uh, has been established, one is getting a sense that when they go back into local government, they're trying to ensure that they look towards, you know, uh, uh, work hard to get the power public to vote for them in those by-elections on the one hand, while on the other, they will try to see if they cannot solidify the GN GNU relationship to spill over into local government. Um, so, so, so kingmakers now begin to change, mm. you know, to, to shift you know, from the way they were when they were in local, uh, after the uh, 2021 local government elections. We are beginning to see, like, your parties like Al Jama, mm -hmm. we're beginning to see MK now coming into the fore, also cementing themselves and appearing attractive, because what they're trying to do is to look towards the next local government elections where they will try to solidify their basis and get more votes. Okay. Uh, just quickly, in 30 seconds, it would appear that the MK and the EFF are actually fighting for the same voter base. What does it mean for their working relationship in the Progressive Caucus? 30 minutes. I mean, 30 seconds. <laughs> Well, um, sh 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 should they want a progressive caucus that is, you know, strengthening in terms of opposition politics in uh, the, the, uh, the, the country, I would expect that instead of, you know, looking too much at their differences, they should try to look at their similarities. One would say that in as much as there are some differences between them, but they've got more policy positions which they align on. So I would, I, I, I would expect that they should make sure that they unite and try to, you know, build a strong opposition uh, 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 politics in the country since well the DA uh, has now now became uh, you know joined uh, the, the, the administration the important thing is that where they are they need to ensure that um, those who are in power they are accountable not only to their own constituencies but they are accountable to everyone across the board so I really believe that um, this you know they've, they've got a lot to agree on than to disagree on and that would help them to strengthen this uh, opposition in Parliament dr. Malala thank you so much uh, for your time and thank you so much for your insights of course this is all that we have for you on the politics wrap uh, this Friday. We'll be back on Monday. But of course, Mbani will be back after the break with your sports and weather.